All right, so today we're looking at Nabil Anand versus Superlek. This kid is special. And outside of his ability to fight, he's also insanely lean. So this is gonna be awesome to break down. You actually can see a lot of the muscles in action, uh, which is why I'm really excited to break this down for you. I'm also gonna be doing something a little bit different. So whenever we go through each thing, I'm actually going to bring you to the Human Anatomy Atlas app and spin around and, and, and let you guys see different things as they're happening, okay? So I think that's a little bit better than just splicing in the anatomy. So as always, we're gonna start where the kinetic chain starts off the ground where he's producing force for this really good knee and clinch. So we're gonna look at that. We're also gonna bring our attention up to the shoulder and look at what's happening there as well, okay? So let's start here. He's actually, he switches his stance and he starts to plant his foot, okay? So this starts to strike. And so what's happening here just globally in the lower extremity is this idea of triple extension. Uh, and he's also getting a little bit of an advantage of the stretch reflex, not really in the calf as much because you can see his, his heel is pointed, but he is plantar flexing to get there, okay? So with plantar flexion, we have muscles like the gastroc, which is this big muscle in the back of the calf. And if we hide it, we can see the soleus as well. All right, so those are the muscles that are assisting in plantar flexion or that are plantar flexing or extending the ankle in the closed chain or when the foot is planted on the ground. Now let's come up the chain and look and see what's happening at the knee. So the knee is also extending. So as he plants, boom, that knee straightens out. So let's go over to knee extension and look and see what's happening in knee extension. We can see that knee extension is just the act of straightening out the knee. So in this thing here, since we're, since we're looking at it from a software that doesn't allow for, uh, at least for this movement, closed chain movements, this is the beginning of knee extension. And then these muscles would shorten, the quadriceps muscles would shorten and create knee extension. So it is happening in the closed chain here, but you can still see that the knee is straightening out as the ankle does the same thing and as the hips do the same thing. But I typically highlight the top three muscles, but I do want to show you that underneath the top three muscles is a muscle kind of hiding under here called the vastus intermedius. So that's something that I haven't shown in the past, but it is something that's contributing to the movement. All right, so now we've got plantar flexion, we've got knee extension, and now we're going to look at hip extension. So we can see as the knee straightens, the hip comes forward and that line from the torso to the thigh becomes more straight. That is hip extension. And so what muscles are involved in hip extension? We've got the glute max, we've got the hamstrings, okay? So glute max, and then we have the three hamstring muscles that we're all familiar with. And then we have this guy here, adductor magnus. We don't really get to see that as much uh, in, in some of these breakdowns because I just try to keep it as simple as possible. And I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with you guys. So. Adductor magnus is an adductor muscle, which means it just kind of moves the leg from an outward position to an inward position related to the uh, anatomically neutral position or just kind of standing there. It would be bringing the leg in. But at certain degrees of hip angles, you can see it playing a role in hip extension. So that's also something that's happening here. Okay, so we've covered all of this. Now let's talk about something called that stretch reflex that we've talked about before. So as he goes into this triple extension movement, that puts a big stretch on the muscles in the front of the hip, which he's gonna to use to create a more forceful contraction and a more powerful knee as he clenches, okay? So the muscles involved in hip flexion. We have so many. We've got the rectus femoris, we've got the sartorius, we've got the TFL. We've even got the psoas major and the iliacus down here and even some of the smaller adductor muscles. And then the pectineus, very often forgotten here. But we can see that the whenever people talk about their hip flexors, they're not just talking about the psoas or the iliacus or that big rectus femoris that crosses the hip and the knee. Now this one is being put on more stretch than the others because it is involved in knee extension and hip flexion. So that's something to consider. Uh, the rectus femoris is put on a massive stretch whenever we're taking advantage of the stretch reflex in the muscles of the front of the thigh. Okay, so now that we've got that covered, we're gonna look at the top of the body here. Okay, so th the main thing we're gonna look at is shoulder extension. So we can see muscles like the tricep and the posterior delt and the teres major and the lat all involved in shoulder extension that's helping him bring that clinch and make him more powerful for the knee. So if we bring this up, we can see that 
shoulder extension if we were just to start in that neutral anatomic position or arms by our side. Shoulder extension is just bringing the arm back behind our body. So again, we talked about specifically the long head of the tricep. We can see that in the Nabilanon because he's so lean. And we've got the posterior delt, we've got the teres major, and then we've got the lat. Okay, so big posterior chain movement here as he pulls his head in for the knee. Okay, so very efficient movement and very powerful movement here all the way through the kinetic chain. All right, so this movement is probably my favorite movement just because we haven't really talked about this. We don't really get the chance if we're looking at the UFC, they're in an octagon and they're not in a ring. So we can't really see, and they're not allowed to grab the fence of the octagon. So hooking your hand on the ropes like this is not really an option whenever we're looking at UFC fights. But with one fighting, you can definitely do this. And I think this just kind of highlights Nabil Anand's fight IQ as well. But I want to show you what's happening with these Muay Thai kicks that really characteristic big arm swing typically happens on both arms. So we've got that one arm coming across here, and then we've got this arm that's typically moving the opposite direction to create a little bit of torque in the trunk. But he's using it as a stability measure. And in order to stabilize himself, he's actually using a combination of shoulder adduction, which we're gonna look at here in a second, and then elbow extension. So he's pressing down on the ropes instead of trying to counteract the movement of the other arm when he, when he swings this roundhouse kick. So let's take a look at shoulder adduction because we haven't looked at this very much. We looked at horizontal adduction but not actual shoulder adduction or the act of just bringing the arm closer to the body from an outward position. So the start of shoulder adduction would be right here. So this is the start of the movement and he's bringing the arm in and it's happening about the shoulder joint. Okay, so if we go, we can actually see that the pec, this is, it, typically people don't associate shoulder adduction with the pec, but it does. It, it, it has an anterior and a posterior chain movement happening in that frontal plane. We also have the coracobrachialis that's shortening. We can see those muscle fibers. If we pause, the muscle fibers are at a really big stretch here. And as they shorten, the arm comes in, therefore producing shoulder adduction. And then of course we have the teres major in the lat, which were also pretty heavily involved in shoulder extension as well. Okay, so we can see those muscles at work whenever we're talking about shoulder adduction specifically, and then elbow extension. We could take a real quick look at shoulder or elbow extension. Most of you know how the triceps work, but still pays to look at it because Nabil Anand, like I said, is so lean, it's actually easy to see kind of the lateral and the long head of the triceps in him as he's doing it. So this is just the act of straightening out the elbow. All right. So that was my favorite part about this. Now let's go to the other side of this kick and actually look at what's happening in his trunk during this roundhouse kick. All right. So we see he's about to grab hold of the ropes. And where I want you to focus on this one, we see that really big, like we talked about that arm swing, where I want you to focus for this is right here in the trunk. Okay, so we've got, again, we've talked about kind of a similar movement that what we look for in that, where we had the clinch in the knee. These muscles put on big stretch here in the front of the thigh, we've already gone over that. I want to show you how this kind of acts synergistically with the muscles of the trunk. So since he's so lean, we can actually see the separation between the rectus abdominis and his obliques. Look how long he gets on the outside of his trunk before he starts this kick here. So not only is the stretch reflex happening here in the front of the thigh, it's also happening in the muscles of the trunk. And we've talked about it happening in the, the transverse plane or the rotation, but it's actually happening in side bending here as well. And so I wanna show you guys what that looks like for the muscles of the trunk. So if we go to lateral flexion of the spine, we can see, look how many muscles are involved in lateral flexion of the spine. I mean, just all the way down the posterior chain. So I'm gonna remove the lat since we've looked at this. And I'm also gonna remove the external oblique since we've looked at that as well. Uh, actually, you know what? I want, I want you to envision how the external oblique and the internal oblique would be put on stretch here. So that is the end of the movement. All right, so we've got the external oblique. Remember what that looks like. And then we're gonna look at the internal oblique. Okay, so as it comes out of the movement, we can see that it, they get put on stretch. Not only those, if we were to come right over here and I were to remove some of these muscles in the back, we can actually see the quadratus lumborum being put on stretch as well. 
So this is everything removed except the quadratus lumborum and some of the muscles up in the, in the upper part of the spine. So imagine the quadratus lumborum, the internal and external obliques being put on a massive stretch here. And then if we were to look more posteriorly or towards the back, we'd see the uh, quadratus lumborum. But big stretch put on here, especially in the frontal plane. Now I'm not saying that this is the only plane. I'm saying we haven't looked at this in a way, in this way before. And there's just a, a too good of a view not to kind of bring this out. This, this is obviously a triplanar movement. He's rotating, he's flexing. You can see the rectus abdominis here helping flex the spine. And then he's laterally side bending to help produce a lot more force through the trunk and into the leg. And then obviously makes really good contact with super leg face. Okay. So just an insanely easy way to break this down because he's so lean and it's really good visual. I really like Nabil Anand watching him fight. Uh, and hopefully you guys got something out of this. Let me know if you like this a little bit better than me just kind of uh, explaining it and then kind of overlaying the anatomy. It, it will be make for longer videos, but it does allow me to explain a little bit better. Um, and I can't let you guys see the full quick movements because YouTube is getting a little bit more restrictive with their copyrights and things like that. So I wanna make sure that these videos stay up for you guys to watch so you can continue to learn from them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.